Welcome to the Maternity Mentor. Today we will be talking about blood pressure medications during pregnancy and how they can save your life and the life of your baby. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm a board certified nurse practitioner and I have over 12 years nursing experience working a mother baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC, I'm maternal newborn nursing certified and I have received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders as well as perinatal bereavement. 10% of all pregnancies are complicated by high blood pressure. Without proper treatment, high blood pressure can result in death for both mom and baby. Let's explore some of the medications that are used to treat high blood pressure during pregnancy. High blood pressure can have devastating consequences during pregnancy, including low birth weight, preterm labor, seizures, and death. As a result, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists, or ACOG, recommends that women with severe high blood pressure be treated with medication. Severe high blood pressure is defined as systolic blood pressure equal to 160 or higher and or a diastolic blood pressure equal to 110 or higher. When a woman's blood pressure is between 140 to 159 systolic and 90 to 109 diastolic, the research is not clear regarding the use of medication during pregnancy. As a result, the decision to treat is based on the provider assessment of the whole clinical picture. There are many risks associated with high blood pressure for both mom and baby. The risks for mom include seizures, stroke, breathing problems due to fluid in the lungs, heart attack, fluid in other organs, including the kidneys, placental abruption, which is the detachment of the placenta from the uterus, complications during delivery, and emergency cesarean section. Risks of high blood pressure for the baby include reduced oxygen levels in utero causing lower birth weight, as well as preterm birth and the complications associated with prematurity. If a woman is prescribed a blood pressure medication, her first thought is regarding the safety of the medication for her baby. Safety depends on the medication being used. All blood pressure medications cross the placenta and will enter your baby's bloodstream. However, once blood pressure medications are recommended, the benefits usually far outweigh the risks. It is much better for a 24-week baby to be exposed to blood pressure medications in the uterus than be born at that time. Babies do considerably better in utero despite exposure to blood pressure medications. Similarly, a mother having a seizure can cut off blood supply to her baby, causing fetal death. So preventing the seizure by treating the high blood pressure is beneficial to both. Research is still unclear if treating high blood pressure during pregnancy will prevent a baby from being low birth weight. However, the studies do seem to indicate that treatment of high blood pressure reduces the development of other complications. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about the blood pressure medication, methyl dopa. Methyl dopa is a blood pressure medication that has been around for a long time and therefore is well studied. It has the longest record of safety for use in pregnancy to treat high blood pressure. Methyl dopa is a centrally acting alpha adrenergic agonist, which means it works directly on the part of the brain that controls blood pressure. It stops the brain from causing blood vessels to narrow or the heart rate to increase, which decreases your blood pressure. Methyl dopa is considered a first line agent that can be taken in pill form during pregnancy. If blood pressure is severe, it can also be given in an IV. Side effects of methyl dopa include fatigue, poor sleep, decreased salivation, and depression. Some evidence indicates that women with a prior history of depression should not take methyl dopa because it can increase the risk of developing postpartum depression. Methyl dopa is safe for breastfeeding. Labetalol, a beta blocker, is another first-line medication used in pregnancy to treat high blood pressure. 
This medication works by blocking the receptors or sensors in your blood vessels that cause them to constrict or tighten, which increases your blood pressure. Labetalol also slows your heart rate, which allows your heart to relax, lowering your blood pressure. Labetalol is usually given as a pill you take by mouth, but it can also be given in an IV. Labetalol appears to work better than methyl dopa, but has been associated with low birth weight in babies and hypoglycemia or low blood sugar at birth. Side effects of labetalol include sleep disturbance, fatigue, lethargy, exercise intolerance, and bronchospasms. Labetalol is considered safe for breastfeeding. Nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker that works by slowing your heart rate and relaxing your blood vessels. Nifedipine is considered a second line blood pressure medication. This medication comes in a short acting and long acting version, but usually the long acting version is used. This is because the short acting version can cause sudden severe drops in blood pressure called hypotension, which is dangerous for both mom and baby. Nifedipine cannot be used if you are also receiving magnesium sulfate therapy, as the two medications together can cause dangerously low blood pressure. However, short-acting nifedipine is sometimes used to treat preterm labor due to its effects of relaxing the uterine muscles to stop labor contractions. Side effects of nifedipine include peripheral edema or swelling in the arms and legs, tachycardia or high heart rate, palpitations, headache, and facial flushing. Nifedipine is considered safe for breastfeeding. Hydralazine is a vasodilator, which means it helps your blood vessels get wider, which reduces your blood pressure. This effect increases the amount of oxygen and blood your heart has available to it, which reduces its workload. Hydralazine can be given in pill form. However, it is most commonly given intravenously because evidence shows that hydralazine is extremely effective in cases of severe high blood pressure. Side effects of hydralazine include nausea, palpitations, headache, and flushing. Hydralazine is considered safe for breastfeeding. Clonidine is another centrally acting adrenergic agonist that reduces heart rate and relaxes blood vessels to lower blood pressure. Clonidine is similar in action to methyl dopa and is considered a third line agent. Clonidine is often given when more than one blood pressure medication is needed to control high blood pressure. Side effects include headache, dry mouth, insomnia, and anorexia. Clonidine is considered safe for breastfeeding. There are several medications that should not be used to treat your high blood pressure when you are pregnant because they can harm your baby. These medications include angiotensin II receptor blockers or ARBs, direct renin inhibitors, and aldosterone antagonists. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors are not able to be used during pregnancy either because they have been linked with birth defects including kidney defects, small fetal head, absence of urine, and fetal or neonatal death. Propranolol is a beta blocker that should not be used because it has also been associated with birth defects including low fetal heart rate, reduced fetal development, and neonatal hypoglycemia. Diuretics are still being researched and safety remains unclear. They reduce blood pressure by removing extra fluid and salt from the body, but this also reduces plasma volume, and the effects of this on the baby are uncertain. High blood pressure during pregnancy can be very scary. I hope this has explained the safety of medications you may be prescribed to treat your blood pressure so you can feel confident in taking them. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.